it's time to define how polar coordinates are going to work when we combine that with what we've learned about complex numbers and how to graph them on a coordinate plane. So you'll notice this is no longer a rectangular looking coordinate plane. Now it looks more like a polar coordinate plane. It has radius going out this way and it has angles. And you can see these things measured out by those dotted lines. Okay, so we've done this with ordinary numbers. Now we're gonna do them with complex numbers. The easy stuff we can get out of the way right at the beginning, right? The real part of this one is negative five halves. The imaginary part is five radical three over two. And I'm pulling those just from the rectangular form of this number. The modulus we've talked about before, I'll just remind you very quickly, the modulus is the square root of the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared. For this particular problem, if you go through the math there, you'll get five for the modulus. Great. Here's where it gets a little bit new. We've got two ideas here, the argument and the principal argument. They're going to be slightly different ways of describing basically the angle in polar coordinates. And what I wanted to do is first remind you that angles are measured. Let me just switch ink here so we can squeeze a little more in. Tangent of theta equals y over x. If you remember that conversion equation going from polar to rectangular coordinates, that's going to be very useful for us here. In complex coordinate planes, the imaginary axis is y, the real axis is x. So for us, what we're really talking about here is the imaginary part divided by the real part. Okay. Now, if you actually go ahead and do that for this problem, what you will get is tangent theta equals imaginary part it's right here, that 5 radical 3 over 2, real part right here. What you're going to get is uh, not the prettiest thing, but everything is going to simplify out just fine. And you will get tangent of theta equals negative root 3 once you do that keep flip change junk. Okay, so tangent of theta equals negative root 3. Where is that true? Think back to your unit circle. You should remember there's two places where this could be happening. One is like here, okay? That's, that's a place where tangent equals negative root 3. Here's another one over here. There's another tangent equals negative root 3. Well, which one is it? Here we go back to our rectangular coordinates for a clue. Notice that I have negative x and positive y. Okay. Negative x, positive y tells me I am in quadrant 2 over here. So we're going to always use the rectangular coordinates as a clue if there's some ambiguity and you're not sure which quadrant you're in. So we're going to be in quadrant 2. And the angle here is 2 pi over 3 from the unit circle. Now you'll notice, remember coterminal angles? These are the things where you would say, well, okay, I believe you that it's 2 pi over 3, but could it also be negative 4 pi over 3? Or spiral this thing around, 8 pi over 3? Well, yes, it could be all those things. And they would all be arguments of this function. But when we talk about argument, I mean, no one really likes coterminal angles that are gigantic. So by tradition, when we talk about the argument, we typically confine ourselves to the interval 0 to 2 pi, just to keep things from getting gross. Okay, so that's enough about argument. Principal argument is slightly different. Principal argument, and here I mean capital A, is just a different interval. And there's reasons for it that I just don't want to get into. But what we basically have to pretend is that the lowest you can have is negative pi, and the highest you can have is positive pi. So in this example, what I'm going to ask you is, is our argument outside of that interval negative pi to pi? Is 2 pi over 3 bigger than pi? It is not. So we can use that for our principal argument just fine. Where might it have made a difference? Well, I'll give you an example, and I'm just going to make this one up. Let's say a different problem gave you an argument of theta of, I don't know, 5 pi over 4. Okay, I'm sorry, this ink is just not working for me. I thought it would be fine. It is not. Let's say in my different problem, I had argument of theta equals 5 pi over 4. Well, you'll notice that's bigger than pi. 
So we would have to adjust things when we go to the principal argument and say, mm -mm, that one is too big. So we're going to find a coterminal angle that is similar to this. We're going to subtract 2 pi. And that would get me to this one, which is negative 3 pi over 4. So you may sometimes find yourself monkeying with the principal argument in a way to get it back inside this interval right here. Enough about that. Let's move on to closing this problem out. And I want to say what this number is, z, in terms of polar form. And look how this is written. It's written z equals r times cosine theta plus i sine theta. Well, we know what r is, right? r is equal to the modulus of z, which for us is 5. And we know what theta is. We just talked about that. That's 2 pi over 3. That's the argument. And i sine, and that also gets 2 pi over 3. So here's how you write something in polar form. You simply take the argument, put it into these two trig functions. You take the modulus, stick it out front, and there we go. That is the polar form. It represents exactly the same thing. It is this point right here, except in polar coordinates, not rectangular coordinates.